And Allah has a supreme example. Tawakkul is putting your full trust on Allah who has the supreme examples of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may go through dark tunnels in your life. That's part of life and a part of a believer's life. You think they're dark, but Allah always chooses what's best for you. It's astonishing the matter of a believer. Everything that happens to him is good. You may not know it. You may not see the wisdom of it in this life. You may later on see it. If you don't see in this life, you will see it in the life after. Ibn Rajab mentioned the story of uh, Qadil Maristan. He said about himself, Qadil Maristan, he said, I was hungry one day in Mecca. And I became hungry one day that I couldn't find anything to eat. So I went walking around in Mecca. I found a pouch, a tightly tied pouch. I picked it up and brought it to my house. And then in my house, when I untied it, I found a beautiful necklace of pearls that I, it's like I've never seen anything like it before. He went from a difficult time to the utmost of ease. But tawakkul didn't waver a tiny bit in his heart. Full tawakkul on Allah when he was walking around hungry. And the same tawakkul now that he's a millionaire. It didn't last for long. The circumstance changed. But tawakkul remains firm. Unwavering tawakkul. As soon as he walked in Mecca, right after that, he walked in Mecca, he heard the old man calling out, I lost a necklace and I have 500 dinar reward for whoever brings me back the necklace. He said, I called the old man. That was bad news for him. He thought he was a millionaire. He said, I called the old man. Come to my house. I think I have your pouch. So he told the old man, describe the necklace for me. He said the old man not only described the necklace, but he described the pouch and the string that was tied around the pouch and the number of pearls and the string that held the pearls together and every single detail about the necklace. So he said, I gave him the necklace. It had to have been him. No way could have knew that all those details. And he handed me 500 dinar. And just as I was about to take it, I thought to myself, he said, I don't deserve this. And I refused the reward. The man kept insisting on giving the reward. And it was as if Abu Bakr wanted to keep his reliance on Allah totally, refusing the reward for something he felt he really didn't deserve. He didn't do nothing to deserve that money. So the old man took the reward and left. Qadil Maristan, whose name is Abu Bakr, Kuni Abu Bakr, said, I left Mecca after that. And I took the ocean. And on the way, the ship began to sink. All the money on board sunk. And many of the passengers, most of them, died. He said, I seen a small raft while I was in the water. I held on to it. And the wind kept blowing me, blowing me for such a long time until I got to an uh, occupied island. When I landed on the island, he said, I immediately headed to the masjid, finding that there's no one there. So I began to recite Quran. The people attended the masjid. They came to me, stranger in town. They asked, could you teach us Quran? They seen him recited. Could you teach us uh, Quran? He said, yes. And then they began to overwhelm him with gifts. Then he said, I seen pages in the masjid one day. So I began to read in them, pages of the Quran. They said, you even know how to read and write? He said, yes. They told him, will you teach us and our children how to read and write? And they began to learn from him how to read and write. And also they showered him with gifts. Then they told him one day, after being there for some time, we have this problem. We have this young orphan girl. She has recently been orphaned. Her father died. And we want you to marry her. This was a tactic they did to try to keep him in town and attached to the town so he will not think of ever leaving them. He resisted. He wasn't even thinking about marriage. But based on their insistence, he said, I agree to marry her. He married her. Okay, the night of the wedding, 
when they presented her to him, he said, I looked at her and I was startled and astonished and I was unable to raise my eyes off her neck. I seen the necklace I gave the old man some time ago on her neck. This is a true story, authentic story. He wasn't looking at his new bride's face even though she's mentioned as being one of the most beautiful women in that town, in that island. The relatives around him said, you broke that orphan's heart. How could you look at the necklace and not at her? You're breaking her heart. It's like you're saying she's ugly by your looks. He said, I began to tell them the story of how I found that necklace on her neck and how I returned it to some old man in Mecca and how I left Mecca and then the ship sunk and how I arrived to their island. I told them the whole details of the story. They began to shout and cry, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And the crowds in the town began to gather. He said, why are you people doing this and why are you astonished? They told him the man you gave the necklace to is the father of this girl. And what's more astonishing than that, is we used to always hear him say, I never met a Muslim on the face of this earth like the man who returned the necklace to me. And he used to, they said, we used to always hear him make dua, Oh Allah, unite that man who returned the necklace with my daughter as her husband. He used to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he be the husband to his daughter. And Allah answered his dua. This is what happens with tawakkul. During hard times, your tawakkul needs to go unwavering. And that light will reappear at the end of the tunnel. Tawakkul is your source of ease and happiness in both difficult and happy times. That's not the end of the story. Look it, from tunnel to tunnel. You see the light, then you go in another tunnel. He said, I lived with her a very nice life. And Allah blessed me with two children. Tawakkul, through ease and hardship. Then she died. She died, his wife died. Another hardship. So he said, me and my sons inherited the necklace. Then my two children died. Another hardship, but no, tawakkul still there. He said, then I sold the necklace for 100,000 dinar. And that's where I got the wealth. He was explaining later on how he got the wealth he has. Whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to Allah, Allah will always find him a way out from every single difficulty you can imagine. He will provide him from sources he could he never imagine. You never, you're, you're, you, it will come from sources you never even perceive. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be sufficient for him. Whoever puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will suffice him.